Hello, my name is David Sheston, I'm with ASUG, and welcome to a discussion today with some very uh, important people, and we're going to have a talk about influence and how SAP interacts with ASUG and the different avenues that are available uh, to our members uh, to work with and join SAP in various ways. Uh, today I have with me uh, Bridget Chambers, CEO of ASUG. Thanks for having us. Thanks. I have Tanya Reichert. She is the Executive Vice President of QGP at yep. SAP. Yep. And uh, Hans Hafner, he is a Senior Vice President, TIP, TIP, uh, Cross Product Management at SAP. And my colleague, Marco Dorn, um, Product Manager at SAP. And I was David Sheston at ASUC. Welcome. So, yeah, welcome on stage. Right. Um, so, Bridget, what does influence mean for ASUG? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, ASUG means a lot of things to a lot of people. We focus on networking, we focus on education, and we focus on influence. And influence of those three is really the key differentiator because it's the thing that you can't get anywhere else. And so I find it to be such a critical part of our core programs. And we do so in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. We work with customer influence councils that SAP puts together and are led by customers. We have nearly 100 special interest groups that focus on different influence topics. That's a tremendous amount of people focusing on very specific avenues to drive value for customers. In addition to that, we focus on co-innovation topics with Heinz and with our other colleagues from SAP that include customer engagement initiative, customer connect, so there's a lot of different ways for customers to get involved and to drive SAP in a direction that they think most fits mm -hmm. their need. But uh, how do you get your members involved in the programs? Often by just letting them know that the opportunity exists. I mean, you, they make tremendous investments in SAP and it's not just a monetary investment, it's, uh, it, they're trusting their brand, really, mm -hmm. because they're running the competitiveness of their brand in their industry and in their marketplace on an SAP platform. So obviously, as the you know, very smart and talented developers back in Germany are focusing on the next iteration of SAP and they come out with great innovations like HANA, you know, focusing on how that type of innovation can drive value, customers need to share how that really fits into their specific world mm -hmm. so that the roadmap not only has all the right innovation in it, but it has the right use case, it has the right interface, it has the right long-term solution and fit for that customer. So asking a customer and letting them know that they're empowered to participate is often enough. If for some reason we have to go a little further than that, then what we do is we reach out to those influence councils. We reach out through our partners. We have the best network of partners in the ecosystem and they of course are responsible for much innovation around the core. So they reach out to their customers, get a lot of feedback and they help us provide that through the influence process as well. It's um, a lot of different ways yep. to hit the target but the important thing is that customers hear about it and they get involved and we are a highly influential channel mm -hmm. to make sure that SAP is moving in the right direction yep. with their roadmap. Yeah, that's true. So, um, switching for example to one of the programs which SAP is driving to the, to the customer engagement initiative. So, um, can you elaborate a bit on where do the projects come from? Um, projects usually start, the project uh, ideas start in discussions with customers. So influence councils at ASAC are a great, great source for them, where SAP people or customers might come with ideas, bounce it there, discuss that, and out of these discussions then come our, come our ideas for the future. And those then need to go to, through some evaluation uh, channels, and here Customer Engagement Initiative is one of those, where we kind of take the first ideas, try to get customers that help us figuring out what the pain points really are, what their value is, what the potential would be in the marketplace, right? And then, if that is uh, benefit to everybody, take that to the next level when it comes to development projects. So in many, many cases, it's those councils, influence councils, advisory councils, as Richard mentioned, where those ideas are being born and then put through the channels. So a lot of the ideas that are coming up in the uh, in suggestions and, and the requests that are coming up through the influence councils are really influencing <laughs> the uh, customer engagement initiative and Absolutely. the topics that are going to be that, yeah. be, that are released. They influence the roadmaps. I mean, roadmaps is a great mechanism to discuss what we have today, what we're going to have tomorrow, and what's going to happen in the future. And then those pieces get discussed 
uh, and then get prioritized, and then the most important ones are being put uh, through the channels. And how does the CEI project, uh, uh, projects work? How does the program work? Uh, the program works such that uh, we, uh, first of all, look for customers that want to participate on a specific development topic, mm -hmm. which could be productivity of, of something that is released for years, like for example, NetViewer Business Client, or we're looking for a, few, for a new feature set in uh, business objects, for example, or a whole new product on HANA, right? And then these, these pieces get discussed in, in workshops, then site visits that happen, where we really get down to the detail on what's really important for customers, how the software needs to look like, build prototypes, take them back to customers, then uh, get together again, synthesize all our findings, and from that then base priorities, and then finally put that through to a standard product. It's a real deep dive and connection to customers directly with the SAP developers. Absolutely. Customers from an IT people perspective, from a business perspective, and also end users are very important. So that we get the broad spectrum of feedback that we need in order to put products together that then really are accepted by the marketplace and by the end users. And customers are really able to get their needs built into the solutions, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's the whole reasoning behind that. So that we make sure any ideas which are out there before get validated and then reprioritize. So we have many project teams that go out to customers and then come back and then they have to kind of adjust their backlog where they figured out, oh, we thought this and this is on top of the priority list, and then they come back and see it's different. And this is a great success yeah. uh, for those uh, project leads going out there. Mm -hmm. And how can uh, members be involved in these projects? Members can be involved through these influence councils, where there are some projects being started up and running, that's one way. The other way, the more structured way, that you have a good overview on what's going on uh, in total at SAP, is uh, three times a year. We put together a list of uh, development projects where development project leads from SAP side are looking for customers to engage with. And then uh, members of the user groups can register. And there are some people at ASIC that do a great job <laughs> making sure that folks know about these opportunities and then actually register uh, during this phase. Uh, and then we get all these registrations, these uh, people that are interested in those topics, mm -hmm. and then um, we put these lists together per topic, hand it over to the project lead, and then the project lead invites all these interested people from ASAC members right. uh, to participate in the first call, get some additional explanation, mm -hmm. and then get the ball started. Yeah. We encourage our members to be watching for notifications from us when the topics are open, which then we can then direct them to links that give them the complete list. Absolutely. And we're going to try to make that process a bit easier in the next time, giving more specific uh, direction as to topics they may be interested in. Yeah. And do you have some examples of the results? Yeah, in the end the result is achieved in uh, when we ship software mm -hmm. that includes straight feedback from customers uh, on features needed, uh, processes needed, connectivity integration needs that they have. So it's about releases that are being shipped, it's about and, and all sorts of uh, product areas that we have, be that enhancement packs from the suite, be that uh, NetWeaver releases, be that BobJ releases, but be that brand new products that we run through that channel, right? So it's about the end user interface, it's about things that run in the background, it's about integration uh, options with other software which is out there. Mm -hmm. right? It's in the end a delivered product, a delivered release that then helps customers get the value out of the software. That's great. Okay, um, so, Tanya, now that we heard about strategic discussions in the influence councils and discussions about the next release in a development project, how does customer connection fit into the picture? Yeah, I think that's a very good question. But before I go there in detail, I want to say that I think we as SAP and it's Heinz or my team, we really need the input and the feedback from you as our customers, as ASAC members, because we are not the experts. We are not the experts in the industry. We have some expertise, but it's not like that we are doing it day to day. So I think it's key that we get your input and experience to improve our product, but also to have new innovations via Heinz program. And I think you said difference. Let me turn it around. It's complementary. There is no, yeah. no difference. <laughs> okay. yeah. I think we have many things which are similar or the same. So there's a very close interaction with the developers directly and the de developers enjoy because they see that someone uses their software so they're not building it for the waste bin and so it's for them independent which program it's more motivation. Now maybe not send money but it's, it's a high motivation. Yeah. And a few things are slightly different. So we really focus on the smaller improvements 
So you do your day-to-day -day operations and maybe there's a small piece missing and you think, why does SAP not fix this? <laughs> it's maybe even a bug. Somebody thinks that? Uh, I cannot imagine, but maybe. <laughs> I don't believe it. I've never <laughs> heard that. David told us. <laughs> uh, maybe I was brief wrong. <laughs> but I think if you have such That's improvement great. ideas, yeah, we really want to fix them. So with, with customer connection, you can directly impact our development portfolio. So we have reserved some capacity to really make the product even better and make your life better. And, and therefore, we really need your input and then you can directly impact it and we have reserved some capacity. So we are ready to, to start whenever you have some input for us. But um, so where do these topics come from? Like where you say, this is where SAP should look into. I mean, where does it come from? So I think we work very closely with the user groups and ASAC is here a perfect example because I think you are very powerful, many members behind and a large customer base. So if you as an ASAC member have an idea for a focus topic, address it to the ASAC colleagues, and then I think we will collect it, we will together look at it, we will evaluate, we will of course look how many customers do we have. For us it's very important to increase adoption, so we are really doing it to have more customers using our product, and if we see that there's a high customer interest, we will also check um, what could be a release cycle, what could be a de uh, delivery cycle, is the skill and development expertise, is everything available, and then we jointly will make a decision and go in execution. Mm -hmm. But the input of the focus topic needs to come from you, from you as ASAC members. Okay, and um, I mean, when I think about the discussions in the CI where there's the discussion about the next release, the next enhancement package, I mean, you find the information in the service marketplace. Mm -hmm. um, where would people find then the results from a focus topic or from these improvement requests which are discussed? I think first of all, one difference between the programs is what we deliver is completely non-disruptive. So we deliver our improvements as notes or in support mm -hmm. packages. It's not the next release, it's not the next enhancement package. And of course we need to make them available. So we need people need to know where to find the improvements. And we have built a tool, it's called Improvement Finder. And that's, I would say, really an easy to use tool. Because when they showed it to me first, they said, even you can demo it, which means mm -hmm. uh, you don't need to have a, any technical background or something, you just go in, like this normal search things, and you put in CRM, or let's make an example where I think ASAC was active, utilities industries, Meter, meter to bill. And you would find meter to bill. We have 14 improvements yeah. there currently. Yeah. Or you go to CRM and utilities. I know their development is currently busy developing, co-developing with your members. And that we have another 12. And overall, and this also shows that we really have impact. Uh, we already delivered more than 340 improvements. Mm -hmm. So yep, it's not good, a vision, yep. it's not a fake, it's reality. <laughs> yeah, it's here, it's there, you can use it. Look at Improvement Finder to use it. And please help us with getting the right focus topics in our portfolio. They okay. just they recently had that wrap-up call for the uh, meter to bill customer connection. Uh, it was a very exciting call. All the uh, participants were glad to hear all the improvements that were delivered through notes. Yeah, so and great. I think that, that helps us with the adoption. Because we, we always look at the downloads, mm -hmm. and we have globally already more than 19,000 downloads, oh. which helps me also <laughs> justify the program to our board, yeah, yeah. because they want to increase adoption, and we want to do it non-disruptive. So every time, whenever it fits in your own schedule, um, you can just implement the node. And it's processes that can really uh, improve your day-to-day -day experience on your, on your software and solutions. Yeah, yeah, and we got some very positive feedback and some success stories because customers came back and said, unbelievable, SAP listens again. <laughs> unbelievable, we could improve our performance, usability, or this and that was fixed. So it's, we have some blocks, so it's really nice to get this feedback. Maybe not the first one because we were believing we listen all the time, yeah, but um, some feedback on when they implemented the improvements. That's great. I have to say, you have to give a lot of credit. I mean, not only to the executives that are on the stage, they're making it happen every day, but you've got to give some credit to Bill and to Jim. When they stepped into their positions, 
it's, it's now been almost four years, I think. One of the first things that they said, and they said it over and over and over again, is we're listening to you. Mm -hmm. I was at DCOM in uh, Munich early on in, in their co-tenure, and Jim stood up on stage and he said to uh, you know, an entire room full of the best and brightest developers, you should expect to see customers sitting next to you while you're developing the next iteration of SAP. And they've been true to their message and you've been true to these programs and customers are benefiting every day by downloading a note, yep. being more sufficient, being uh, you know, more um, valued in the moment, and then also participating from a CEI perspective in the long-term vision. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been in this ecosystem for 20 plus years working with different enterprise applications and, and I've worked with a lot of SAP's competitors and I tell you this, it's a differentiator for SAP. They don't listen to their customers the way that SAP does. I've listened to Bill and Jim on stage for the last two days and they regularly say, we want to build the solution for what our customers need. Mm -hmm. You need to talk with us, share that vision with us so that we create this solution together. And this is them putting their money where their mouth is mm -hmm. and making sure that it's happening in the daily as well as in the long term. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, thanks a lot. I think, I mean, that was a very good Perfect closing. closing. Then. Yeah, so <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah, thanks um, for coming here on stage. Thanks, Britton, Tanya, and Heinz. Thanks, David. And um, to everyone who's listening to um, ASAC News, thanks for tuning in. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.